Hi guys, I wanted to give an updated analysis on Ezra's Eagle. There have been uh, several great presentations people have done on the internet and um, each pr presentation seems to provide some different and unique uh, context to Ezra's Eagle. Um, I'll have to say I discovered this I think reading Michael Rush's books, The Remnant Shall Return, about a year and a half ago and um, I think it is one of the coolest prophetic discoveries that we've ever had at least in our time because it relates so specifically and you know I've always been interested in the last days and the timelines and studying the prophecies and trying to understand them and um, Ezra's Eagle just provides one of the coolest uh, somewhat timelines for this prophecy and when you marry it up with Daniel and John and Revelations with Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, some of these other prophecies in the Book of Mormon like Nephi and Moroni, things really start to come together nicely. So I kind of want to talk about um, what's about to happen, where we are at in Ezra's Eagle. Um, keep in mind, I will do some speculating as we go forward, but everything that we've seen in the past, we do know what has happened Hindsight is 2020, so we can see clearly um, the events and how um, perfectly this prophecy has come together. Um, why are we just now understanding this prophecy? Um, how do we prepare? And what are we misinterpreting? Because there are some stumbling blocks in the prophecy. As you can see here, here's an artistic rendition from Mike Crowley and I think his wife. Uh, how they created this. This is kind of the spoiler um, of what you'll see, but I want to go step by step through each scripture to show you um, what this is exactly saying. Um, this is Ezekiel here and on, on the left side and on the right side, this lion represents a absolute outstanding, wonderful return. I believe of the lost 10 tribes, the great and dreadful day of the Lord, where we are rescued from a merciless antichrist who is persecuting the heck out of the Christians. So let's move forward. Um, first of all, <clears throat> this is just an incredible prophecy and it hasn't been given for us to know until the very last days. And ask yourselves why? Why would the Lord give um, Ezra this prophecy? But he wouldn't understand it even, um, you know, George Washington and the, the pilgrims and the Washington and all these previous prophets where this prophecy was in the Bible um, before it was taken out as part of an apocryphal account. Um, but it, they had this. They would have read it, but they would not have understood it. And in fact, it wasn't meant to be understood except for hindsight after a certain amount of events had passed by where we could um, determine where this prophecy begins and so clearly the Lord intended for us to understand this in the very last days and in our time frame and that's why I think it's so exciting um, is it important for us to know you know I, I don't think it's critical for your salvation I mean you do the things that you're supposed to do and you'll be blessed but just understand that prophets, both ancient and modern, they've all inquired of the Lord concerning the numerous visions and the prophecies that they've studied. And the bulk majority of these prophecies relate to our day. So there is a lot of information and everybody in the past has inquired to know what's going to happen in our day. So why rehash it? Well, I was, again, I, I discovered this through Michael Rush. I think he was the first to understand Ezra after he was writing several of his books. And um, he, the way he explains it, he just felt inspired to go back and reread this and it became clear unto him. So I've been on this journey of discovering. Many have shared their views and perspectives. Um, there are some common stumbling blocks for many with this prophecy. And so I wanted to take a different approach in helping people understand it. Um, you'll understand that 
sometimes prophecies are cryptic in nature well most of the times and um, that's why some will accept them and others will reject them um, they are intended uh, to be studied and you have to give effort and diligence and you have to have a desire to want to know them so if you're not ready you know the milk before the meat you might reject some of these things you might get held up on some minor issue because it's too inconvenient to want to know this prophecy I think that would be a mistake um, so I want to go line by line with Ezra's uh, chapter 11 and then the chapter 12 angelic interpreter of the actual prophecy so it begins here then saw I a dream and behold there came up from the sea an eagle which had 12 feathered wings and three heads you can see an artistic rendition here of this great eagle coming up from the sea um, next slide um, I should say before I get further into this I think it might be beneficial for you to pause and read for yourself chapters 11 and chapters 12 from the Apocrypha so here it is chapter 11 and here's chapter 12 which is the angelic interpretation of the uh, prophecy okay again this is the great eagle and I saw and behold she spread her wings over all the earth and all the winds of the air blew on her and were gathered together um, forgive me for these busy slides but I write out a lot of my thinking and I wanted you to have them on the slide versus just keep them in my notes this is talking about an eagle kingdom um, and we know that there are two eagle kingdoms there was ancient Rome and then modern America and I've seen YouTube videos from other uh, religions and they tried to associate this with the Rome um, and their reign of emperors but um, when you look at the timing and um, to trying to decipher how well it marries up it doesn't marry up very well with the Roman Emperor but you'll see it marry it matches very accurately with the presidential terms of office here in America um, which is what makes it so exciting so let's look at the angelic interpretation here on um, verse 11 this is Ezra chapter 12 verses 11 through 14 the eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel but it was not expounded unto him therefore now I declare unto thee behold the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon the earth and it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it in the same shall 12 kings reign one after another so the verbiage from um, chapters 11 and chapters 12 when it says the eagle coming up from the sea this represents America America coming into fruition it does not represent no, uh, Rome understanding the Lord's covenant that he made with America America is the promised land for those who will serve God and we know that when past peoples have been inhabited these lands and turned wicked they were destroyed and when they've been righteous and they've been allowed to prosper and they've even been taken up into heaven under the Lord's wing such as the city of Enoch so there is a unique characteristic just being in here in this American continent um, we know the history we know the covenant and promise that the Lord has made with America and so when it says 12 feathered wings and three heads you can see here James Prout he's another author author of Ezra's Eagle I think he was also inspired by Michael Rush but James Prout has an artistic rendition I highlighted the feathers here and you're seeing that Ezra begins to give some descriptions of this Eagle that he's seeing um, the translation and the definitions of feathers and wings is interchangeable and that can be confusing but when you think about them translating this text from you know the other languages you're gonna get some translations that 
uh, get jumbled and mixed up a little bit. But you'll see as we read through the prophecy that feathered wings is describing just the feathers on the wing. So look here at this uh, artistic rendition. You see 12 feathers here and you see three eagle heads. You're going to see two little feathers that I did not highlight here. And um, these will, will show you later on why these come into play and how Ezra describes this. But right now, he sees 12 feathered wings and three eagle heads. The verbiage that says she spread her wings over all the earth. This says she had influence and power over the earth. When you think about America, it's the world reserve currency. Think about all the technological advances and innovations that have happened in the last couple hundred years. I mean, we have had unprecedented knowledge via the internet. Think of military advances and, and dominance. Um, I was an army intelligence officer for 10 years and I, and trust me when I say America is the supreme elite fighting force even now. We have clear and present threats from other countries, but America dominates unlike anybody ever has. It's the most well-trained, well-equipped, um, with the best intel capabilities, which was my world. So um, that's what this is talking about, her influence over all the earth. And when it says the verbiage, all winds blew on her and gathered together. Look, America is a country of immigrants. Winds blowing on her is people immigrating to America. These are people seeking religious liberty, opportunity, and freedom. And um, they could come here and they could create and live what is known as the American dream. This is the idea of being the master of your own destiny. And this is a critical piece for becoming accountable to your maker. I believe freedom and free agency is the most important and sacred gift given from our maker. In the war in heaven, you know, Satan sought to took away, Lucifer sought to took away our freedoms. And that was the most evil thing that could ever be done. So if I was to define evil, I would say it was would be any person or government or entity that tries to take away the freedoms or the free agency of another person or group of people to any degree. And um, that's how I define it. So when you look at um, people's intentions, does this trend towards communism, socialism, fascism, or does it maintain freedoms and free agency? The Lord needs his people in these last days to make decisions for themselves so that they are accountable to um, choosing between good and evil. When it says here, 12 kings reign one after another, clearly this is talking about successive reigns where people stand up and lead and then they're done. Their term in office is over. It's not like a tyrant or a dictator or a king who just keeps control his whole life. All right, verse three, and I beheld out of her feathers grew other contrary feathers and they became little feathers and small, but her heads were at rest. The head in the midst was greater than the other, yet it rested with the residue. Moreover, I beheld and lo, the eagle flew with her feathers and reigned upon the earth and over them that dwelt therein. And I saw that all things under heaven were subject unto her, and no man spake against her, no, not one creature upon the earth. Looking at the angelic interpretation in Ezra 12, verse 19 and 20, here it says, And whereas thou sawest the eight small under feathers sticking to her wings, this is the interpretation that in him there shall arise eight kings whose times shall be but small and their years swift. So, first of all, he established 12 feathers and three eagle heads. Now he's establishing eight contrary or sh what we can call short feathers. When, when it says out of her feathers, which is wings, grew contrary feathers. Um, remember, it's interchangeable. Contrary means different. 
And this angelic interpretation describes these kings or presidents as having a shorter than expected or established term of office. Um, now, this can become a stumbling block when we talk about and try and understand the term short feathers. Because as you can see here down below, this is a, this is a graph that Michael Rush created that shows um, the uh, left side of the um, eagle's left, left wing. And it lists all the presidents. And you can see, you know, some had served one term, some served two terms. Some served four terms, like um, FDR. Um, so the term short just means small and swift, and it should not be interpreted as, you know, anything else, like they had one term and that's short. Or Ford, you know, he, he replaced Nixon, and, and he served even shorter than one term. He, you know, he served a couple of years. Um, the, instead, it should be interpreted as cut short by like the secret combination or something somewhat nefarious or legal where they were forced out and prematurely ended their elected term of office. So um, understand uh, that there is secret combinations. There is what Michael Rush likes to say, the whore of Babylon. Um, there are president makers you know, you can read some of these books and then she'll dare call it conspiracy and others. And you can see the behind the scenes wickedness of men trying to usurp control, dominance, power over us. And remember, that starts to breach the concept of freedom and free agency. Um, what I want you to do now is study this timeline. You're going to see Nixon... Um, between Nixon and Ford, that represents kind of the midpoint. So you have the first seven presidents up to Nixon on this wing, and then you have the next seven presidents up to Barack Obama on um, the second half of this uh, left wing. Um, this will uh, come into play a little bit later, but it's important to understand this up front so that you, as we read through this prophecy, you'll understand things. Michael Rush also pointed out that even the years leading up through Nixon uh, was about the midpoint and also the years after leading all the way back th through Obama it was about the same amount of, of time. So you have two mid times here represented, but I kind of think more this prophecy is going to talk about the line of succession of these presidents and Nixon was approaching the mid times or the middle of this wing. Okay, continuing on that verbiage from those previous slides, her heads were at rest. This is referring to the eagle heads. Now, it's possible that these heads are the whore of part of the whore of Babylon, the secret combinations. Um, clearly we're going to see that they are seeking money, power, control, dominance over us. Um, but at this point, it says they're at rest. And that is because in the historical timeline of this eagle, their power comes towards the end. They are, they are not in control or power, but maybe except behind the scenes but they come into play later. So they are resting currently. Um, when it says the verbiage, the head in the midst was greater than the other. I like to point this out because I think it's interesting, interesting that the angelic in, uh, interpretation points this out as well as the actual prophecy. This is clearly the boss head. This is the dominant head. He's the one that leads. He is going to be the one that implements much change um, and abuses his power on a global scale with global dominance, unlike we have ever seen before. But right now, the verbiage that says it rested with the residue, meaning the others, the other heads, I, I think it's a mistake to think they're asleep, but instead they're posturing for a great reset. And when the timing is right, 
um, they can cause, if, if we can have enough pain points, that's when they say, never let a, a tragedy go to waste, you know, take advantage of any tragic opportunity, so to speak. And just imagine if there was an economic failure or collapse, and then our presidential uh, got, president got blamed and, you know, everything went into chaos. Imagine the amount of um, change that somebody could make. Um, and so when it says all things were subject unto her, that verb is still talking about America. Uh, understand, look, the world is driven by money. It's driven by the dollars. Uh, the dollar is the America, is the world's reserve currency. And initially it was backed by gold, but now it's more influenced by energy and specifically oil. Um, energy is key. If you cripple your energy sector, you can cripple the economy and make huge changes. And um, we'll leave it at that. When it says no man spake against her, clearly, you know, people, rulers, nations complain and, you know, speak against America. But don't take that literal. Just understand this was translated from other languages and and it's an apocryphal text. So it was, um, you know, we, we have to understand where this account comes from. But what this is saying is no, uh, no country could or would take action against America without there being significant repercussions. And um, any time in the past when countries have stepped out of line, when Saddam invaded Kuwait and I, I was deployed over there for some of that, um, and especially during the heightened dominance of the American power, which was these last, you know, three or four decades, uh, clearly, these countries were dealt with. They were brought back into line. Also, furthermore, you're going to see that these eagle heads come into power and ultimately the Antichrist uh, comes into power after them. And uh, he has an unprecedented global power and influence on all people, unlike the history of the earth has ever known. Well, this all is made possible um, by these eagle heads. And um, we're going to transition from somehow from a, you know, American economy to a more global scale. Um, where money, finance, personal data is, is shared and used for control. And so you're seeing the setup to these things being implemented. When it says, chapter 7, And I beheld, and lo, the eagle rose upon her talons, and spake to her feathers, saying, Watch not all at once, sleep everyone in his own place, and watch by course. But let the heads be preserved for the last. And I beheld, and lo, the voice went out of her heads, but not, uh, but from, excuse me, the voice went not out of her heads, but from the midst of her body. And I numbered her contrary feathers, and behold, there were eight of them. So as you can see, we talked about 12. He established these 12 feathers and these three eagle heads. And now he's establishing that there's eight contrary feathers. Um, let's go with the angelic interpretations here first, and then we'll go the verbiage. As for the voice which thou heardest speak, and thou uh, that thou sawest not go out from the heads, but from the midst of the body thereof, this is the interpretation, that after the time of that kingdom there shall arise great strivings, and it shall stand in peril of failing. Nevertheless, it shall not then, uh, then fall, but shall be restored again to its beginning. Um, so the verbiage, first of all, when it says the eagles rolled up on her talons and spake, um, you know, this is my interpretation, but when I think of the talons of an eagle, that is the most important weapon the eagle has. Its power comes from its talents. And so at this point, don't assume that these eagle heads are speaking. Remember, this is a vision on the historical timeline. So these eagles come to play later when they wake up. 
Um, the talons represent the power of the people. And if you want to be more specific, it's power given to Congress by the people. And Congress makes laws for the safety and welfare of the people. You know, it's a constitution of the people, by the people, for the people. The verbiage that says, watch not all at once, watch by course. Not everyone is going to be president at the same time. They will serve for a specific time and then be done. That's clear. The verbiage that says that heads be preserved for the last. Um, understand, again, they come into play at the end and um, after many of these presidents, presidents have served. The verbiage that says the voice went not out of her heads, but from the midst of her body. Notice the angelic interpreter. He explains that there shall arise great strivings. And that's kind of vague. I looked up some definitions. There's many definitions. But think of this, these definitions. Strivings means to exert much effort and energy, to struggle or fight forcefully, to contend, a vying with others for victory or supremacy, jihad holy struggle, all these things, when you think about it, yeah, we've had strivings, political strivings for a long time, but it has been on a hyper-accelerated pace. Uh, I, I would say, arguably, beginning with the, the presidency of Donald Trump. It seems like we entered into a different era, a whole new phase of contention, and um, it's really crazy. Uh, Satan is the author of contention. And um, when we have contention in our hearts, we will not feel the Holy Spirit and we can be deceived. So we have to be careful of this contention. But these strivings, this contention, this infighting, this is what the voice represented. Then he gave a hint, it shall stand in peril of failing. Understand? That is the Constitution hanging by a thread. And I put this little hanging by a thread image up here for you. But then the, he says, it shall not fall, um, meaning the elders of this church will bear it away and support it. And then the verbiage that says, it shall be restored again to its beginning. This moves all the way to the end of the second coming. And basically, as established initially, by the founding fathers, only this time it will be more perfect. Christ will reign and be president in the new Jerusalem. So the angelic interpretation just gives a summary overview all the way to the, the end there. Here's a key piece. It says there were eight. And as I explained earlier with this eagle's wing, we knew there were 12 feathers. We knew there are three heads. Ezra is now establishing that there are eight what we will call short feathers. They are contrary feathers. So understand, Ezra has no idea or concept what he's seeing and why he's seeing these things. It, it disturbed him. He inquired about it, but the Lord gave him uh, these things. But then he says, hide these things up. So the Lord um, did not mean for us to understand it. Even the pioneers, they had this account in their scriptures when they came across the plains and then uh, a little later, it was taken out of, you know, of the uh, these scriptures. So this is a prophecy that could not be understood until after a certain sequence of events and certain feathers came into play. So the Lord is saying, this is for our time. This is for us to know. This is for our blessing and benefit in the latter times, which is what makes this so exciting. So just ask yourself, why does the Lord in this Ezra's vision, why is he going to show a specific order or sequence? And again, one reason for this vision in our day is to benefit in understanding the sequence and to help us get prepared. Um, as we go forward, I just want you to think of the incredible odds of getting this um, as accurate as it is um, from way back then. I mean, th there's no coincidences here. 
Okay, verse 12. And I looked, and behold, on the right side there arose one feather, and it rained over all the earth. So he previously set up everything he saw, the long feathers, the short feathers, but now he's going to start to give us where these fall at in the timeline. And so it was that when it rained, the end of it came, and, in the, and the place thereof appeared no more. So the next followed, stood up, and rained, and had a great long time. A great time, meaning a very long time. And it happened that when it rained, the end of it came also like as the first, so that it happened no more. Then came there a voice unto it and said, Hear thou that has borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee, before thou beginnest to appear no more, there shall none after thee attain unto thy time, neither unto the half thereof. Then arose the third, and reigned as the other before, and appeared no more also. So it went, with all the residue one after another, as that everyone reigned, and then appeared no more. Let's look at the interp angelic interpretation again, uh, one of these scriptures. Whereof the second shall begin to reign and shall have uh, and shall have more time than any of the 12. So I want to break these down. Verse 12, um, basically the previous verses established what we're seeing with the, the eagle heads and the wings and all this stuff, but now he's giving us the sequence, the succession of these leaders, and this is how he helps us see where we are at in our history. So verse 13 and 14, um, we learn that each feather is, uh, our president reigns for his designated or elected term of office. Then the next president in the sequence ruled for a great time, a very long time. And as you can see in the image, Prout drew this feather as being very long. And I wrote here a great time. Um, and uh, you know, it's twice as long. This was specifically emphasized um, by the angelic interpretation here um, that he shall have more time than anybody else. And there's a reason the angel points this out. It's to timestamp where we're at so, so that we can understand the hindsight of this. Understand, we, would, we could never understand this before these events actually happened. So it was not intended for us to know this before. So when you look at the president's terms of office, obviously this long feather is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and there's a picture of him right there. He served for four terms. He died in his fourth term. Um, many get hung up at the start of this eagle. As if, if Roosevelt's this long feather, Hoover is the previous feather, and people are getting hung up. Um, like, why is he the president? Well, think of the secret combinations that he kind of began. Think of the opportunities to take away our freedoms and free agency that he started. Uh, he and FDR, I mean, um, they really implemented, you know, what I would call a secret combination. Here's another theory, though. I find it interesting that Hoover became president about 100 years after, generally, after the founding of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And potentially... In my opinion, a hundred years before the final speculated second coming of Jesus Christ. And you're right now you're saying, oh crap, you have no credibility anymore. I don't believe you. Uh, I'm going to explain why I say that um, later on with a timeline. And it is all speculation. But this is just something to consider. Um, also, you know, look at, again, look at his initiatives. Look at um, he's done. For me, though, it is it is enough to understand that the Lord is time stamping which president this is so that he can know, we can know where this begins in the timeline. Look, I'm not going to question why the Lord didn't give all the specific details of the first five millenniums in the Bible. I'm not going to say, well, the Bible is garbage because he didn't, you know, specify everything. Uh, but And then he wrote everything at about the sixth and seventh seal. I mean, the Lord can timestamp this for us to understand. So if he decides to start with Hoover for whatever reason I don't understand, that's great. Don't let that become a stumbling block. It would be 
it would be ignorant to just dismiss this prophecy and say, well, that, that doesn't uh, align with what I believe, so I'm going to dismiss it and not even study it anymore. All right, so verse 15 and 16. The voice that begins to speak is the voice of the people represented by Congress when they pass the Constitutional Amendment, um, the 22nd Amendment. And um, if you read section 1, it designates how many terms of office and being elected more than twice and all that stuff. In fact, I would, I would suggest you pull out your Constitution, read section 22, and read section 25, and I'll tell you why later. Now, the verb is that says, There shall none after thee attain unto thy time neither the half thereof. This is a critical piece. This is um, specifically that constitution. And that's why I'm telling you FDR had four terms. That broke tradition from all previous presidents, you know, having just a few terms. Um, so they made this provision. Verse 20, then I beheld and lo, in process of the of time the feathers that stood up on the upon the right side that they might rule also and some of them ruled but within a while they appeared no more for some of them were set up but ruled not remember we've been talking about the left side of uh, the the sequence of events for the left side of this eagle's left now we're talking about the sequence of events for the right side so he's kind of still laying out this umbrella uh, view. Let's read the angelic interpretation. This is critical. That in him there shall arise eight kings whose times shall be small, but small, and their years swift. And two of them shall perish the middle time approaching. Four shall be kept until their end begin to approach, but two shall be kept unto the very end, or the end. So let's, let's break this down. Chapter, verse 20 of chapter 11, uh, not, keep in mind they have the same verses, chapter 12 and 11, but chapter 11, verse 20, this verse summarizes the coming and going of presidents through the end. But in the process of time, which meaning over time and later on, the feathers that followed, so we're distinguishing the previous group of feathers on the left wing and now we're looking at the right wing the feathers that followed um verse 21 of chapter 11 again this specifies the right wing and it mentions some feathers were set up but ruled not so this is referring to two feathers i i say left wing i meant right wing here that that think to rule but do not. So I'm going to give you a spoiler for later. Um, um, these two are not allowed to serve here. Um, and frankly, this is imminent. We are looking at kind of our time right now. Um, so in chapters uh, 20 and 21 of the angelic interpretation, here's what's critical. Two of them shall perish, the middle time approaching. Look down at James Prout's uh, feather here. He just gave us the sequence of this left side. You've got two short feathers here. And if you count one through seven here, and then one through seven there, they are done, the middle time approaching. And even as Michael Rush pointed out, if you look at the length of their terms of office, this is almost like the middle time approaching as well versus the latter half. But I look at the, it as the sequence and their, their end is the middle time approaching. So um, uh, you'll see that Nixon, he was the seventh president and Kennedy was the fifth president. When you look at all these presidents, they all served, they all served naturally. FDR died, another you know, died naturally, but he served his intended time in office. So their length was natural. But you'll see Kennedy, he was assassinated. And Nixon, he was basically um, had Watergate and then was forced out by even his own party to force to resign. So his term in office was cut short. He was a contrary feather. Now then it says, 
four shall be kept until their end begin to approach. So now we're summarizing the next phase of presidents. We're, we're summarizing that here's the four on the right wing that will be kept till their end begin to approach. And it's important to pay t attention to the, dis the distinction between uh, the right and left wing. So these second four feathers are nearing the time when the final end is getting near. And we know the end is the final second coming of the Savior when he cleanses the earth with fire and begins the millennium. Um, what I understand is we're getting close, as the prophet has said. And then the verbiage that says, but two shall be kept unto the end. And so a little bit of a spoiler here. I'll just tell you right now, these two are the stout horn and the beast, or AKA the Antichrist and Satan. And um, we know as, when the Antichrist comes, you know, his whole purpose is to delineate between good and evil. The wheat will be separated from the tares. Uh, we will go through a sifting process from the Antichrist, and it, it's not gonna be fun, but we have the Lord on our side, and we are easily going to be able to handle this with um, prayer. We will all dial in. We will all become much more prepared to receive our Savior. We will have so much more gratitude when he comes. So this is going to be a not fun, but a necessary process. Um, going on in verse 22 of chapter 11. Um, after this, I looked and behold, the 12 feathers appeared no more nor the little feather, the two little feathers. So we're talking about the left wing is now passed on this historical timeline as, of his vision. And there was no more upon the eagle's body, but three heads that rested and six little wings. All right, so now these four feathers have just passed. If you haven't already seen earlier, but you, we can deduce if these 14 feathers ended with Obama, well, then Trump was the first feather on this side, and then Biden would be feather number two. And now we've just learned that feather three and four um, come after, and we're going to learn that they think to rule, but they don't get to rule, and this eagle head's going to come into play. Okay, here's the rendition, you know, Prout uh, drew, and he put, associated the presidents here. Um, on this side. Uh, again, Kennedy and Nixon were, their years were swift and, um, and small. Ask yourself what happened at the time that Trump won, ran and won against Hillary Clinton. Why did, why did we move from this left wing, uh, so to speak, to this right wing? Um, here's a few possibilities that you can search for yourselves, but we entered a different time, a different era, uh, where the strivings are beginning to take place on a hyper-accelerated speed with, you know, the impeached Donald Trump and uh, all this kind of stuff going on. Also think about that time. Here's a few hints. You can study on your own. I'm not going to elaborate. The woman in the sky constellation. You had the first solar eclipse across America. You had President Nelson became the prophet nearly a year after President Trump became president. And you had the beginning of seven years of tribulation. So basically hindsight is 2020. The Ezra prophecy could not have been understood until these events actually took place within this ego. All right, verse 22. After this I looked and behold, the 12 feathers appeared no more, nor the two little feathers. And there was no more upon the eagle's body, but three heads that rested and six little wings. So we're going to, we're going to back up a little bit here. This is where we're at guys. This is, this is, um, our day. Um, and we can see the history and now we can see what is, uh, about to come. Verse 24. Then saw I also that two little feathers divided themselves from the six and remained under the head that was upon the right side. The four, for the four continued in their place. And I beheld, and lo, the feathers that were under the wing thought 
to set themselves up and to have rule. So he's talking, he's setting the stage for this side. Like, okay, these four think to have rule, but these two separate themselves. We know the sequence from a little bit earlier. Six remaining feathers, four continue in their place. We know Trump is feather number one, Biden is feather number two. Okay, and I beheld, and lo, there was one set up, but shortly appeared no more. Now, remind, keep in mind, go back and read it if you have to. He delineated this uh, left wing, and it's over. It's past. And then he set the stage for the right wing and the sequence of events. And now he's going to give the specific details of this right wing. So, verse 26 begins with a short feather on this side, President Trump. And we already know that he's a short feather, that he came and went. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit. But let's look at verse 27 first. We know uh, this relates to Biden and his future is crazy. Um, he will be sooner away than the first. So for those of us following Ezra's eagle prophecy, we know that Biden will not have a 2024 election. He will not be around in 2024. And um, if you want to look for validity of this prophecy, look for validity of these events that actually happened and align with this prophecy. His term is going to be cut short by this deep state, secret combinations or whatever, and it will confirm the prophecy. Keep in mind, you've had a liberal president, Kennedy, cut short. You had a conservative president, Nixon, cut short. Then you had a conservative President Trump cut short, and now you will have a liberal President Biden cut short. So don't think, oh, this is Republicans versus Democrats. This is the, the deep state secret combinations, the guys that want to control you behind the scenes. Um, let's talk about Trump. Trump has been a stumbling block for many in this prophecy who expected him to be assassinated or forced out via impeachment, similar to Nixon. And none of those things happened. Trump ran against Biden, and somehow Biden won more votes than any previous president in the history of our nation, even more than Obama by a significant amount. So therefore, you know, I have to conclude a couple things. Something happened in the election by the deep state or secret combination or president makers um, with this whole election thing. Or the other conclusion is the Ezra Eagle prophecy is bogus. It got it wrong. You can dismiss it, walk away. I think personally, it's more plausible looking at the perfect track record of Ezra's Eagle prophecy um, and how things have happened so perfectly that maybe Trump was supposed to serve two terms and something happened and he and he didn't um so i know people will uh, disagree and i believe it would be a mistake to dismiss the prophecy just to fit our preconceived paradigm of what happened but ultimately uh, we might not know now but i think we all will eventually come to understand this so i believe this was michael crowley and his wife that created this this eagle picture i posted on the front and so i'm going to use this version going forward so you can better visualize it but you can see all the presidents here you can see presidents three and four we don't know we don't know the eagle heads we don't know the antichrist or beast all right verse 28 and i beheld and lo um the two that remained thought also in themselves to reign okay so and when they thought so behold they're awaked one of the e the heads that were at rest, namely, it was in the midst, for it was greater than the two other heads. And then I saw that the two other heads were joined with it. And behold, the head was turned with them uh, that were with it, and did eat up the two feathers under the wing that would have reigned. We're going to discuss some of this on the next slide, but let's just say this is now, Ezra is now seeing our day. We have President Biden 
and we just learned that the next two presidents are going to be eaten up and that this is going to be for be before the 2024 election guys it is about to get very tumultuous uh, and from here on out we are only speculating uh, how things could happen we, we know by the prophecy what it kind of looks like but we don't know how these things are going to happen so we need to fasten our seat belts like president nelson says um, the events are going to be mind-boggling going forward when it says the verbiage the two that remained these are what we call feathers three and four as designated earlier from the four that continued in their place so just understand that's what's next verse 29 and 30 the eagle heads wake up and they're unified in purpose now why did they wake up did we have an economic collapse paving the way for a great reset and and uh, allowing for many changes when it says many changes take place think about it are we supposed to have an economic collapse or was there some attack you know on something do we move to a different currency or trade does the mark of the beast get set up where you know to buy and sell we have this new this new system are the eagle heads <clears throat> the three branches of government or both let's explore this so I'm gonna I'm gonna speculate here here's a possibility vice president Harris maybe she's the third feather but she's not allowed to rule because they associate her incompetence with Biden just think if the economy or some attack on America or something bad happened and then the blame game starts up and it's gonna be like Biden you messed this up you blew this and so Harris thinks, yeah, I'm next in line. Biden messed it up. And then they say, no, Harris, you're implicated as well, maybe. So basically the Eagle Heads, they'll implement her along. And then if it's not Harris, the line of succession would say it's the Speaker of House, which is Pelosi. They could, they could throw her under the bus too. I, I'm only speculating. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. But what I'll say is, Biden will either be assassinated like Kennedy or he'll be removed for cognitive decline. Um, but he is not going to be elected out because he is sooner away than Trump. So before you listen further, you might want to pull out the Constitution and look and read Amendment 25. And as you read this, you might see kind of how constitutionally um, how who is supposed to be set up and how they get taken out verse 32 but this head put the whole earth in fear and bear rule in it over all those that dwell upon the earth with much oppression and it had governance of the world more than all the wings that had been and after this i beheld and lo the head that was in the midst suddenly appeared no more like as the wings but there remained two heads, which also in like sort ruled upon the earth and over those that dwelt therein. All right, verse 32, guys, this head is bad news for everybody. He makes a lot of changes. What is the catalyst for him being able to make change? What is the catastrophe? Never left an uh, opportunity to go to waste, right? What, what happens economically or whatever? All what we know though, he has a global governance and rules with much oppression. Everybody's afraid of him. No previous president has had this amount of global power and control as this eagle feather has. So I'll reserve more details till the next slide. The head in the midst was suddenly no more. Um, this is, you know, like previous presidents, his term came and went. But this descriptive word suddenly says like it was a shock, like it was a surprise. All of a sudden he's gone. And so keep that in mind as, as we think about this eagle head. Then there remained two heads, which also in like sort ruled. So the next two heads, they take charge and they kind of um, rule in similar fashion, going along with all the changes and 
And maybe there's a slight sigh of relief because this first head was such a tyrant. Okay, verse 22. And where is the angelic interpretation I put on this page? Where is thou sawest three heads resting? This is their interpretation. In his last days shall the Most High raise up three kingdoms and renew many things therein. And they shall have dominion of the earth and those that dwell therein with much oppression above all those that were before them. Therefore, they are called the heads of the eagle. And these are they that shall accomplish his wickedness and shall finish his last end. So let's talk about three kingdoms. Okay, we can speculate. These literally mean uh, uh, several things. It's three different countries. It's the three branches of government. It's three individuals. And these individuals' power and stewardship, keep in mind, that can be also known as a kingdom. An individual can be a kingdom. Um, individuals that were from the three branches of government, we just don't know. But, you know, get ready for this. What we do know, the middle head is larger than the other two. It, I take it, um, that he has more power and inf influence because of his current position in government. When it says the middle head wakes up, um, first um, possibly near the end of Biden's term of office, and then the other two join in with him. You know, um, maybe they wake up due to an economic collapse. I know I keep saying that because that's kind of what I'm feeling, but who knows? And it's just the perfect opportunity to make change. Verse 23 and 24, and renew many things. This is saying many changes, a complete reset, taking advantage of a crisis. You know, COVID, there's been some advantage taken, you know, to control us a little bit. The eagle heads, when it says the eagle heads, plural, they have dominion of the earth. It's like there are three leaders here. There's the main eagle head and then his two cronies. Um, but to have global dominion over the earth, unlike everybody else, to me just seems like a change in the global economy, some sort of great reset. And they do it with much oppression above all those that were before them. So guys, these are, these are bad news. And specifically the first one, he's very bad. And they seem to rule with an iron fist like a dictator. They possibly impose more socialistic, communistic laws. Um, they most likely will implement the might of global militaries, not just the U.S. military. And I think they will go to war and correct non-compliant countries like the Muslim nations. So they are called the eagle head, the heads of the eagle. That verbiage just says um, they're called this because of their global tyranny. Um, it's interesting that this is talking about America, the Eagle Kingdom, um, yet it has global dominance. All right, the verbiage that says they shall accomplish his wickedness. Well, who is the author of wickedness? It is Satan. And, and when it says it shall accomplish his wickedness, they have laid the groundwork, the changes. They have established Satan's kingdom and all its controls. So free agency, the most valuable gift, is probably really diminished here. And, and therefore accountability. So, you know, when it says the verbiage and finished his last end, Look, two things, Satan ultimate, Satan's ultimate purpose is to be the God of this world. And second, the wheat have to be separated from the tares. There will not be gray areas on the earth. The earth will be ripened with iniquity, but there will be um, righteousness here. And then it will be destroyed and the millennium will be ushered in. You really need to read Daniel 11 now. Um you know, to understand uh, Ezra and Daniel. I mean, Ezra was a contemporary of Daniel. And we know this because of what we'll read later in the angelic interpretation. But guys, buckle up. It, it's just interesting how these pieces are coming together. 
All right, verse 33. And after this I beheld, and lo, the head that was in the midst suddenly appeared no more like as the wings, but there remained two heads, which also in like sort ruled upon the earth and over those that dwelt therein. And I beheld, and lo, the head upon the right side devoured it that was upon the left side. So the manner in which these heads dies leads me to believe that they are individuals, maybe from the government, but they originate from America, the Eagle Kingdom. And with whatever pending uh, chaos and turmoil that we are about to experience with our next two presidents who get eaten up, we are going to see many changes made. Um, let's, when it says verse 33, the first eagle head came and went like previous presidents. It's interesting to point out suddenly, as I said, this is a shock. The angelic interpretation, and let's just read that now. Whereas thou sawest that the great head appeared no more, it signified that one of them shall die upon his ben, bed and yet with pain. So you could say maybe naturally or maybe poisoned or whatever, but he dies with pain. 27, for the two that remain shall be slain with the sword. For the sword of the one shall devour the other, but at the last shall he fall through the sword himself. All right. So some might believe um, that this death was natural uh, with the first eagle head, but you're going to learn in Daniel, if you read it, that the Antichrist, um, the stout horn, he plucks up these three eagle heads. He is behind their death. So I guess his power and influence, he convinces the first eagle head to uh, take poison or something. I don't know, but he, he dies. So verse 34, when it says the next two rule similar to the first, uh, they seem to rule for a shorter amount of time. And we are learning from this angelic interpretation that they are definitely murdered. When the verbiage that says slain with the sword, keep in mind, you know, I thought maybe this is a Japan country that kills themselves with a sword or whatever, but all throughout the scriptures, the sword has been used to de uh, define all weapons of war. Uh, they're slain with a sword means they are killed by guns and tanks and bombs and everything else. It's not a literal sword. Um, so verse 35, again, we learn that the eagle head on the right was uh, one who killed the eagle head on the left. In other words, the second eagle head that reigns was killed by the third head and then takes over. But then the third head falls through the whole sword himself. Um, the this is basically a suicide and maybe it was a suicide convinced by the antichrist um, because of how how convincing and powerful this antichrist is um, but just remember this antichrist is brilliant he can blackmail he can coerce he can persuade whatever time's going to tell here and we're just speculating okay Verse 36, then I heard a voice which said unto me, look before thee and consider the thing that thou seest. So he's like, okay, check this out. And I beheld and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle and said, hear thou, I will talk with thee. And the highest shall say unto thee, art thou not, art not thou, that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them. All right. Um, verse 35 and 36. This vision moves directly into, frankly, a magnificent rescue of the remaining faithful Christians by the, a remnant that returns, the lost ten tribes. And... Um, you, I'll go. I'll do another video on this later. But this rescue also is known as the Great and Dreadful Day of the Lord. So feathers five and six um, are the two subsequent um, uh, are in two subsequent dreams and visions with Ezra, 
And I would encourage you to read, read that because much more detail is given to them. They are the Antichrist and the beast or Satan. Um, and hence, those are those later dreams. If you're reading Ezra's 11 and 12 like we are, read 13 through 19 and you'll see the details of these two feathers. And it's a significant piece of the puzzle in understanding the Antichrist, the Lost Ten Tribes, the events in America, the great and dreadful day of the ward. And I just got to warn you, it's a scary read, but it doesn't mean you should ignore them. So the context, feathers five and six, stout horn, the Antichrist. And the whole purpose of these feathers is to the sifting of the wheat and the tares. There's not going to be any gray areas. You will either join in the Antichrist for convenience and comfort and you'll persecute the saints. You'll reject the Savior or you will become stalwart and completely firmer in your testimony and you will be endowed with power from on high. So this is an intense process, but completely necessary. Um, let's read the angelic interpretation. Verse 29. And whereas thou sawest two feathers on the wing pass over the head that is on the right side, it signifieth that these are they whom the highest hath kept unto their end. This is the small kingdom and full of trouble as thou sawest. And I discussed prematurely the Antichrist and the beast here. And the lion whom thou sawest rising up out of the woods and roaring and speaking to the eagle and rebuking her for her unrighteousness with all the words which thou hast heard. This is the anointed which is the, the which the highest hath kept for them and for their wickedness unto the end. He shall reprove them. He shall upbraid them with their cruelty. For he shall set them before him alive in judgment and shall rebuke them and correct them. So the vision goes right through the end uh, to our glorious rescue, as I mentioned. Here's the eagle. Um, this eagle has turned bad and is reign, ruled by the Antichrist and the beast. Here comes the lion. So when it says verse 27, I beheld a roaring lion. The ri Who does the lion represent? Uh, the angelic interpreter says the anointed, which the highest hath kept for them. So <laughs> this is their judgment, you know. All the wicked are ripened with iniquity. They've persecuted the heck out of the saints. Read those later visions of Ezra to understand more details if you want. All the wicked are about to have their biggest old crud moment. Keep in mind, this deliverance is to be more spectacular than the deliverance of the exodus of Egypt. And that was pretty dang spectacular. Uh, but this is going to be the ultimate deliverance. This is what everybody's asking about. All prophets in the past, like, tell us about this. And what does this mean? And how does this look? When it says, hear thou the highest, I believe a trump will sound. I'm speculating in a person, a man's voice. Uh, that verbiage will give warning of the impending judgment towards this final wicked kingdom and this final wicked oppressor. I think this is the fifth trump, guys, that sounds. Um, study Revelations, read the trumps. Um, this is an army of 200,000, thousand, the lost ten tribes that comes down. Uh, and um, I can explain those later. Okay, 40. And the fourth came and overcame all beasts that were past and had power over the world with great uh, fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. For the earth hast thou judged with, not judged with truth. And keep in mind, this is kind of that voice from the lion uh, that represented man, which might be John the Revelator. But anyway, he, this is what they're saying uh, to the wicked eagle, or basically the Antichrist and the beast. Thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Thou hast loved liars and destroyed the dwellings, oh boy, of them that brought forth fruit. Oh boy, we're the ones that are bringing forth fruit and they're destroying our dwellings. Oh boy, guys. And has cast down the walls um, of such as did thee no harm. 
Therefore is thy wrongful dealings come up unto the highest and thy pride unto the mighty. Yeah, we will be praying, guys. We will be seeking for reprieve and those prayers will go to the highest and, and he will hear our prayers. The highest also hath looked upon the proud times and behold, they are ended. His abominations are fulfilled and there and therefore appear no more thou eagle nor thy horrible wings or bad leaders nor thy wicked feathers nor thy malicious heads the eagle's heads nor thy hurtful claws nor all thy vain body destroyed guys wicked are destroyed at least here in america that all the face all the earth may be refreshed and may return being delivered from thy violence that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. Okay. The verbiage overcame all the beasts that were past. These are the last two feathers in their kingdom, and it represents the end of wickedness. The stout horn and the beast are the means of the final separation of the wheat and the tares. The lion, the lost him tribes, are, are the means of bundling the tares and burning them, at least for America. The verbiage that says... The earth hast thou ju not judged in truth. Only God can judge. But here we see the absolute power given to the Antichrist to judge. And he judges unfairly. He overcomes the prince of the covenant and the saints. His tyranny is so bad that it was necessary that his time would be shortened in America or no saints would be left. Verse 42. The, we are getting hints of what we can expect to happen. Unfair dealings. Verse 43, thy pride, that verbiage, he sets himself up as kingdom and he declares himself God. He even enters into our temples. You'll read in the other accounts and that establishes the abomination of desolation. When we see that, we know our rescue is imminent as representative of this, this rescue, this lion. When it says they are ended, his abominations are fulfilled. Well, for the saints, this is a glorious day. For the wicked, this is a day of destruction. Verse 45, therefore appear no more thou eagle. This is the eagle kingdom. This is the Antichrist ruling uh, from this eagle kingdom. It was America, but now it's a global dominion. When it says the earth is refreshed, this is the millennium. When it says being delivered, this is the rescue. All right, verse 34. For the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy, those that have been pressed upon my borders, and he shall make them joyful unto the coming of the day of judgment, whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. Okay, that is the end, guys. I hope um, this wasn't too long. I... I tried to make this shorter, but I just can't. There's so much information. This is um, Prout's, um, uh, or not, yeah, this is a Crowley's rendition here. Um, I thought it would be fun to have. So let me give you my timeline. And I'm not going to re recount all the details of what happens and why and everything. But this is just an opinion, and it's purely speculation. And you need to take away... It's scary, but look, fair, faith dispels fear. And the closer you draw, uh, closer to your Savior, the less fear you'll have and the more confidence you will have in him. Because the Satan does say, fear not um, the Assyrian. Do not be afraid of him. You'll know him, you'll recognize him, and you don't need to be afraid of him. You need to be afraid of God, and you need to worship and come unto God. So... I think Biden, we're already seeing the setup of removing him from office, either because of cognitive decline or something through the 25th Amendment or something else. I think Harris possibly uh, could be Feather 3 with Pelosi Feather 4. But who knows? Maybe this is a another president and vice president team that gets put in because the eagle eats them up and that that could signify murder or something. Basically, there's going to be political turmoil and chaos uh, in the near future. So I think in the next year or two, we have an economic collapse. 
and it allows for a massive changes. I think feathers three and four are taken out and the eagle heads take charge and reign. I think they could reign for a year or two. Uh, maybe it could be shorter, but they implement tons of changes that are being implemented currently, but they finalize all these changes. And I think they come into reign um, maybe uh, leading up till 2024. And then I think potentially the Antichrist comes into power. He rules for two years and 10 months. Then we are rescued around 2027 by the lost 10 tribes. Now, I could easily see the eagle heads reigning up till 2027 and then the Antichrist taking charge then. And that's a possibility. The Antichrist flees from America. The Lord comes, the New Jerusalem gets set up. The 144,000 get established. They go out and do a final missionary work across the whole world and they gather in the elect. The city of Enoch returns down here. The Antichrist throws a fit. He's over there in the Middle East uh, wreaking havoc um, and you know uh, attacking the Jews. But the two prophets, the Davidic servant, they are set up to protect Jerusalem and they are allowed to build the temple and they are allowed to be preached to during this time with the, the Jews. The Jews can accept or reject him. The Lord comes and stands on the mount, destroys all the gathering Muslim nations and everybody else that gathered against Israel and they are destroyed. And all of this is wrapped up by the year 2030, 31, um, in uh, Von J. Featherstone's time capsule in the Lana Temple. He talks about um, what a choice generation we are and Christ reigns upon the earth now and as if it's all past tense. So this is also near around the 200th birthday of the founding of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I think that timing is very significant for all these wrap-up scenes. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. My name is John Taylor. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, nobody special. It's just uh, my study. And um, um, God bless everybody. Um, please get spiritually prepared more so. Um, get temporally prepared as well. And take care.